All right, so get this. You guys have sent in a ton of stuff. Forum posts, news snippets, even some YouTube comments. Oh, wow. It's all over the place. Yeah. Missing voters, weird deaths, people talking about these unseen forces, like pulling the strings, you know. (laughs) It's like current events, but mixed with, well, let's just say alternative explanations. Right. So what's the connection? What's the common thread? I mean, that's what we're going to try to figure out today, right? Right. I've got... Uh, an expert here with us who can help us sift through all this and figure out what's really going on. It's really interesting, actually. You've kind of hit on uh, something that's been building for a while now. This um, distrust of institutions. Okay. Like, you know, you highlighted this news clipping, right, about the election recount, and you circled this quote from a spokesperson claiming that the process was, you know, transparent and secure. Right. But uh, in the forum post that you linked, Someone's claiming they've got statistical evidence of voting machine manipulation in Precinct 12. Oh, wow. And this kind of this disconnect really fuels the skepticism that uh, we're seeing you know, globally. And it's not just about elections either. Like you flagged a comment on a YouTube video, right, right about the conflict in Ukraine. And, and you argue that the mainstream media, they're deliberately downplaying civilian casualties. Mm-hmm. And I feel like this ties into like a bigger pattern that we see in what you sent this sense that you know like official narratives are being manipulated maybe even fabricated yeah you know absolutely and and you even highlighted this passage in one of the forum posts where users arguing that that politicians you know they're just puppets <laughs> mm-hmm. controlled by this shadowy cabal oh, yeah, of yeah. global elites it's it's a classic conspiracy theory trope for sure yeah but the anxiety behind it yeah. It's very real. And honestly, it's understandable given what's happening. Right? Yeah. yeah. Okay. Okay. So we've got this like backdrop of distrust, but then you throw in this like curveball. Oh, yeah. The uh, headless Edinburgh man. Oh. This guy found decapitated, clean cut, conflicting witness accounts. This story pops up multiple times in your sources and the forum is just like buzzing with theories. What caught your eye about this particular case? It's interesting. I think what's intriguing about it is is how this local, almost bizarre event becomes kind of a microcosm of the larger themes right. of, you know, distrust and these unanswered questions. You highlighted this comment where this supposed ex-police officer says the decapitation looked too clean for a bus accident. Oh, wow. Which is the official explanation, right? Yeah. So how does this type of firsthand account, even if we can't verify it, right? how does it impact the spread of these theories? That's a question worth exploring. Especially because you also flagged a news snippet about the police closing pubs and shops near the scene, which some forum users, they found suspicious. Mm -hmm. Like they're connecting the dots, even if those connections, you know, might not actually exist. Exactly. And this case, you know, with its lack of clear answers, it reminds me of another source that you sent about the disappearance of Malaysia Airlines Flight 370. Right. You underlined a passage where an author suggests that the official investigation was deliberately misleading. In both cases, the lack of definite information fuels speculation. And that vacuum is quickly filled by theories. Mm. Some, I mean, some more outlandish than others. I mean, in the forum posts about the Edinburgh man, you've got everything from, you know, freak accidents to ninjas. Oh, wow. Even aliens. It's a wild ride through the imagination. Yeah, it seems like when official explanations aren't enough, Mm. right? Like the human mind, it almost has to seek out other explanations, no matter how improbable. Right. And the internet, it just like gives these theories a place to, you know, spread right and evolve yeah. that's a great point it's like you know that saying when you hear hoofbeats think horses not zebras but in these forums people are looking for zebras or maybe even unicorns what's really interesting to me is how these you know seemingly outlandish ideas tap into this very human need for understanding yeah and control you know when we're faced with uncertainty we just we crave explanations even if they you know don't really make sense right So it's not necessarily about like believing in aliens or ninjas, but more about finding some story that helps us cope with the unknown. Yeah, exactly. And you even highlighted a comment where somebody was joking, saying like, I don't believe any of this stuff, but it's way more entertaining than the official story. It seems like humor, you know. It plays a role in processing these anxieties. That's so true. In your sources, I noticed a ton of memes and jokes, especially about the election recount. You even sent this one where they compare a politician to like a bumbling Sean Penn character. Right, yeah. Yeah. Humor can be so powerful, right? It's like a coping mechanism. Finding levity in situations that just feel overwhelming or even threatening. It's also a way to be skeptical. 
without like directly confronting authority. So it's like a pressure valve, you know, letting people express their doubts and anxieties without like needing to have this like serious debate. Yeah, exactly. And sometimes even that shared laughter, it can lead to more productive conversations, you know. Yeah. OK, so we've talked about distrust, the the search for explanations, the role of humor. But what about like the real world effects of all this? How does like all this skepticism, how does it impact our ability to like make sense of things and make mm. like informed decisions? That's such a crucial question. Yeah. And it's something you seem to be struggling with too, based on the stuff you sent. You highlighted these articles about misinformation spreading, the erosion of trust in institutions, you know, and how politics are becoming more polarized. Yeah, it's, it's a lot, honestly. It feels like we're all living in like different realities yeah. and it's hard to know what to believe anymore. Yeah, I get it. It makes sense to feel that way. And um, this leads us to the importance of critical thinking, which again, you, you know, you flagged in your sources. You mean that article you sent about cognitive biases? I thought that one was really insightful, especially the part about confirmation bias. Yeah. And we see that in the forum discussions too, right? Yeah. People are like cherry picking evidence to support whatever they already believe. Ignoring stuff that, you know, contradicts their narrative, just like that comment you highlighted on the YouTube video about Ukraine. Yeah, it's funny. I, I caught myself doing that, too. It's so easy to get caught up in like one way of seeing things, especially when it, you know, already fits with what you believe. Oh, absolutely. And that's why it's so important to be aware of those biases, you know, to actively seek out different perspectives and and be willing to challenge your own assumptions. You know, it's funny. We started this whole thing talking about distrust and skepticism, but now I'm hearing like a more empowering message. Like we have the ability to think critically, to evaluate information and and form our own like informed opinions. That's a great point. Mm -hmm. And it, it highlights something really important. Skepticism isn't bad in itself. Yeah. Right? Actually, a healthy amount of skepticism. That's crucial for us to learn and grow and to make responsible decisions. It's about questioning, not just accepting things blindly, you know, using critical thinking to guide us. OK, so we're not just like conspiracy theorists with tinfoil hats. We're critical thinkers. Right. We're like searching for truth. Yeah. And using humor to deal with all the chaos. I like that. But what about the headless Edinburgh man? Are we just going to like leave that one hanging? Well, we may never know the whole story, oh, right? Light. But maybe that's OK. Sometimes it's more about the journey, the process of asking questions and looking for answers. Yeah. More than like the actual answer itself. I like that. A little mystery keeps things interesting, right? Totally. And who knows? Maybe someday we'll get some new information, something that sheds new light on, you know, this whole Edinburgh thing. Until then, we can keep looking at the evidence we have, think about different perspectives, and maybe even laugh at some of the wilder theories. You yeah, know? that's a great point. We can learn from these stories, even the weird ones, without having to believe every conspiracy theory that comes along. Exactly. And that, I think, is a key takeaway from all of this. It's about finding a balance between skepticism and being open-minded, mm -hmm. between thinking critically and, you know, being open to new possibilities. It's like walking a tightrope, but a really interesting tightrope. Totally. And it's a tightrope we all have to walk in this day and age, right? Yeah. With so much information coming at us all the time. You know, it's funny. We can go from like these big societal things right back to the headless Edinburgh man. Right. Yeah. You marked like a whole section of the forum, right? People trying to explain it. Uh -huh. But like nobody's really happy with any of the explanations. That's the thing with mysteries, right? Yeah. They tell us more about you know, how much we need answers yeah. more than they tell us about what actually happened. Mm -hmm. You even like commented on a post. Right. Ask, yeah. What if we just never find out? And Why? not knowing it can really bother some people. Right. But it can also make people really curious. Yeah. And it makes me think of that news article you sent about like those weird lights. Oh, right. Over the Nevada desert. Yeah. You like highlighted this this paragraph where they're talking about government cover ups and like experimental aircraft. Right. It seems like whenever we don't know something for sure, our imaginations, they just like take over. It's like we have to like come up with stories, oh. right? Connect the dots. Yeah. Even if those connections are more like gut feelings than, you know, real evidence. Right. And sometimes those, you know, leaps of imagination, they lead to real breakthroughs, new ways of looking at things. Mm. But we have to be careful too, right? Make sure those stories don't get too far from reality. So how do we like find that balance? How do we stay curious and explore those what if ideas without, you know, forgetting about critical thinking 
and evidence. I think it's about being skeptical, but not killing our sense of wonder. You know, yeah. be willing to consider unusual ideas, ask mm -hmm. those tough questions, but always like come back to logic and evidence. So not like shutting down our imaginations, but like using that creative energy in a way that's smart and realistic. Exactly. Like you said, we're all kind of like detectives yeah. right? investigating the world. But good detectives, they know the best stories, the most convincing ones are the ones that are creative ANED based on facts. You know, thinking about all the stuff you sent, it feels like a lot of the distrust, the skepticism, it comes from this feeling that like the people in charge, they're not really working for us. Mm. Whether it's about elections, media bias, or those special interest groups, there's this feeling that the system's rigged, you know? Yeah, that's a real concern. And it's been like a driving force behind so many movements throughout history. Mm -hmm. You know, it's important to remember, Power dynamics are everywhere. And people with money, influence, access, they have a bigger impact on decisions. Right. And we got to be aware of that, right? Like really look at what those in authority are doing and hold them accountable. Absolutely. But we can't just get cynical or give up, right? Like thinking that nothing matters, that nothing we do can change anything. Exactly. We have to be realistic about the problems for sure. But we also got to remember things can change. People can make a difference. And working towards a more just and fairer world, that's always worth fighting for. So it's about balancing, right? Acknowledging the problems, but not losing hope. Believing that we can actually work together to make things better. Yeah, beautifully said. And that hope, that belief that things can get better, that's often what drives the biggest changes, the most amazing innovations throughout history. Well, I think we've come full circle. We started digging into all this stuff that showed distrust, skepticism, people searching for answers in a world that feels kind of crazy and unpredictable. And we've talked about how important critical thinking is, how humor helps us cope, and that human need to understand and make a difference. Yeah, it's been a fascinating journey for sure. And I mm -hmm. think what we can really take away from all this is skepticism when it comes with an open mind, curiosity, and that commitment to truth. It can be a really powerful force for good. I couldn't agree more. And Honestly, I'm feeling like more empowered myself, more ready to deal with all the information out there, you know? That's great to hear. And remember, this is just the beginning. Keep asking those questions, keep learning, and keep embracing, you know, the mystery and wonder of it all. I will. And as always, thanks for joining us on this deep dive. We'll see you next time for another adventure in the world of ideas and exploration.